Okay, everybody, this is Sheets, and I'm going to be going over the infinity race from uh, Daytona for tonight, actually. And for those of you that watched my review or preview of the Daytona Cup race, it's a little bit different uh, than that of the infinity race. And the reason is this. So the way the, uh, the Daytona and the plate races set up is that there's not that much difference between the cars and you get a lot of bunching and uh, quite a bit of opportunity for wrecks as a result of that, because you have a lot of aggressive drivers going for the front and trying to get the win. And it's very difficult to separate when you have a fast car from kind of the weaker cars. So what people do in the, uh, in the Daytona, in the cup race, is they really try to focus in on the back guys um, and stack those guys. And I go over that in a separate video um, on the Cup Series, which should be up pretty much simultaneously to this one. But because this is the infinity race, there's a little, there's a little more room for the, the, the top cars that are starting near the front to do some damage, so to speak. I don't mean the actual wreck, but... But, but to get there. So what you're going to have a lot of people do, and again, it's really important to know what other people are doing so that we can figure out whether it's worth pivoting from that, right? Because we're trying to win the GPP here. We're not playing cash, okay? We're trying to be a little bit different to try to win this hopefully by ourselves. And so it is important to know what people are doing so that you can then figure out how to pivot off of that, whether doing so in an intelligent way is possible. So what I like to do is I like to figure out what the obvious thing to do is, which is usually what I would do, right? If, I mean, I'm not, you know, the, the great NASCAR expert, okay? But I am really good at identifying what's obvious. And if you can identify what's obvious, then you can know what the public's doing. And then you could sort of, as I like to say, when I do my, reviews with Bobby, I like to fade myself. You know, I say, okay, this is what I would do. And now I know that everybody's going to do that. So how can I do something a little bit different than that without sacrificing too much and get a lower owned version of what is good? You know what I'm saying? So this is what I think people are going to do. Right? Uh, AJ Allmendinger is in the 34 hole. He's got very little downside, even if he wrecks. He's probably going to weave right through the field and get into the top two, you know, within like a couple of couple of laps. That's the logic, and he's just basically a lock, right? That 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 is the overwhelming chalk idea. Okay, so let's put him in. For example, the other thing you probably want to do is take you maybe not two guys, but at least one guy from these top guys in the front because. All these guys are really fast. So Sindrick's really good. He's got the three. Briscoe's really good. He's got the pole. Um, Chastain, Gragson, Algier, like those top guys are near the front. So they do have they do have a decent amount of win equity, even though there's a possibility for Rex. I mean, you do want to take somebody, at least somebody in the top ten, because there are a couple of dominator points to be had, and you do want win equity, right? So it's you know it's it's it, if you're nearer the front, you have less distance to travel, so you are more likely to win all fell speed equal than someone behind you. So you do want some win equity, and you have really, really fast cars here. So that's what I think what people are going to do, too. They're going to take someone like Cindric, someone like Algier, right? They're probably, if they're going to run an optimizer, set max two of these guys in there, okay? And then kind of run the optimizer. So they're going to have Sindrick, Algier, um, Briscoe, Haley, Joe, like all these guys, honestly, um, look pretty good. So they're going to do max two, probably min one uh, of these top 10 guys and run that. Um, and then what they're going to do is then probably just run the optimizer and see what they come up with. And if you they do that, what they're probably going to, going to end up with is either – they're going to end up with Al Digger, probably two of these guys, and then they're going to default to probably some chalky um, uh, value plays. That being, let's take a look at some of these. 
kind of value plays here. Um, I'm not even sure who's going to be the chalkiest. Like Mills, maybe? Um, Vinny Miller? Guys like that. Um, actually, I don't think that there's going to be that, many that chalky that they get out of the back. Okay. Um, so that that's going to be kind of the – oh, Mike Harmon. And Joey Gay, sorry, I didn't see them. These are going to be kind of the chalk and 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 Golding. I don't know what the problem was. I don't. I couldn't find the chalky guys because they were already in line. So these three guys are going to be probably the three chalky value guys, or I would say guys from the back that people are going to get to. Now it's not going to be a problem getting to any of these guys. Um, there's very little salary problems if you only take, you know, one guy from that top ten. Okay, if you take two guys from the top ten. And let's just say that you also want to play Almondinger. Let's say you play Algier. Okay? Then you run into problems. Then you have to, like, maybe dip into this, to this other crap, okay, um, down here near the bottom, like maybe Timmy Veens, guys like that. And that, that is going to be a build that people are probably going to end up doing. So they're going to get – let's say they, they, met, they put two of these guys in, right? Then what they'll end up having to do is probably – they want to play two top guys and Almondinger. They probably going to have to do something like this, right? This is probably where their optimizer is going to draw them. So it's either going to be Almondinger, and this is what the optimizer is just going to spit out. Okay, it's going to be Almondinger, two of those top ten guys, and and then chalky value like Harmon and Gaze, maybe down to Timmy Veens or B.J. McLeod, guys like that. That's going to be one build that's going to pop up in a lot of optimizers. The other one that's going to probably pop up is something I kind of alluded to before. It's just have one of those guys, okay, along with Almondinger, and then some of the more reasonable guys like Golding and um, who else did I have? Oh, I had somebody else in there. Um, so maybe somebody like 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 Vinnie Miller. Okay. So like these are gonna be this is another build that the optimizer are just gonna just just pop out. Uh the other guys I did mention was was uh where was Timmy Hill? Timmy Hill also. So he could be a guy that pops in a lot of optimizers. So like this. Okay. So knowing that and knowing that you would love to have a chance, okay, to win this thing on your own. How are you going to pivot off of this chalk build? Now, this I have, I have to tell you, man, this, this, this lineup here, if you're playing cash, I'm not telling you what to do, you know, whatever, but if I were playing cash, this, this would look fine to me. You know, this is, this is, this is beautiful, okay? But I'm not paying, playing cash and ever, <laughs> honestly. But if, even if I were, I certainly wouldn't be in a race like this with so many opportunities for Rex. So what I like to do, is find guys within the same kind of starting position ranges, so to speak, that you can use to pivot, right? So like, for example, all right, and that's one thing I'm gonna do. There's a second thing I'm gonna do in a second. Okay? The other thing I'm gonna do is completely change my build, but we'll, we'll, we'll talk about this. So given that this is kind of what I probably wanna do also is take one guy from the top 10, you know, but maybe, maybe two, but no more than that. What I'll probably do is probably fade Cindric and take somebody that's almost as good, like maybe Haley. Algier is kind of popular too, so maybe Gragson be a little less popular than Cindric. Okay. So let's say I wanted to do the overwhelming value build, for example. I would go Gragson instead. And now you can actually get these chalk guys. So even something like this. So if you go Gragson and Haley instead of Cindric and Algier, for example, it's already gets you a little bit different. I still don't think this is different enough to win, um, but this is at least getting you in the right direction. Okay. So that's the first thing I was I would do is within that kind of logical build to pivot around these same starting positions. Okay. So if you're going to do that, the next thing you want to think about is these, these value guys, these guys in the 30s, okay? 
remember, this is a rec fest, so it's possible. I mean, anything can happen here. So what I want to do is just take other guys that are also in these 30s, like like I said, Matt Mills. Okay, he's another guy that, I mean, he's got a shot. Maybe he's got a shot. Timmy Veen's a little annoying, but, you know, um, uh, we did Harmon already. Um, so this one we could use Vinnie Miller, like, for example. Okay. And then even um, Barcel is pretty bad. Um, go back to Golding, like, for example. So here you could take out two of the chalk guys like Harmon and, um, and Timmy Hill or whatever, and you could place them here. So that's another way you could do this. You could keep a similar build, but just pivot within that, you know, within those uh, starting position ranges, okay? Because the people are going to optimize based on starting position ranges because their salary is not going to be an issue this week. Um, and you know what's something interesting? This actual lineup is actually going to be a little more contrarian than you think because – what a lot of really super sharp people are doing now is they're going to say, okay, I'm going to do a max 49.5 or something like that with salary. So they're not even going to get to this lineup, for example, which just by accident um, ended up zeroing out. Okay. Like for example, I'm going to save this just for, just for the hell of it. Okay. So let's, uh, let's fire this up again. Um, so the, the other thing that you can do is, you can certainly, if you want to really be different right off the bat, is you could just freaking fade Omen Dick. I mean, who's to say that that he's just like on some lock to just not wreck? I mean, he's from the 34 hole. He could get out there and wreck immediately. And then if, you know, if, if you know, it's kind of hard to wreck immediately from back there. But, you know, at 11.5, at 50, 60, 70% ownership maybe, on a track and a situation with all kinds of variants, I mean, in a GPP, I have no problem fading him. In a situation like this, then what you can do is then maybe get a little chalkier and a little more bunched with the top guys, right? Now you can play Cindric Haley and Gragson. You're still a little off the board down here because you don't have um, Harmon, for example. Um, and so this is another build. You could just completely fade um, – Almond Dinger. So, like, just for example, just for the hell of it, we'll put five lineups with no Almond Dinger. Just for the, just for kicks. Oh, I gotta do one more, right? So, hold on. Just for a second. Just gonna replace Almond Dinger with Cindric. So, that's what, that's the deal. We know Cindric will be somewhat popular, but what we'll do is we'll, ne we'll never put Cindric in a lineup with Almond Dinger. Okay? So, that's a way you could be different. Now, the other thing you could do, and again, this is not for the faint of heart, okay? Actually, you know, you guys are sharp. You guys can do this. Is you could just come up with a totally different bill, just like you would do in basketball, right? Where you know everybody is going stars and scrubs. Everybody's taking Almondinger and like maybe one or two of these top, top 10 guys and then filling in with these value guys. What you could do is totally like clear the decks, Okay and do a complete middling build. And when I say middling, I mean, yes, price, but also highlight these guys in the teens or in the low 20s that have a chance. So what you could do is, look, you could rely on your projections too. You run your optimizers. And what you do is make minimum of one or even minimum of two in that range between like 15 to 25 or something like that, okay? That's where you get guys like, like um, Alfredo, and he's like a really, really good player. And you want to maybe avoid all of that value down there. And let's see what you can come up with. Like, who's going to play Brandon Brown, for example? He's not terrible, right? And then who else is pretty good? Like, Snyder is not bad from the 19. Moffat you can do from the 12. So, like, here you're fading all of these top 10s. Now, again, maybe that's not exactly – the right build, so you may want one of them, okay? So let's take, um, just to make this build a little different, we'll take something we haven't played yet is Algier. Okay, so we'll put Algier, I think maybe Alfredo might be a little bit popular, or maybe not. So put Algier here, and we'll also put in Alfredo. How about that? So can we get away with this? Alfredo's a little expensive, though, okay? 
He's a, but if you deal all these guys in the teens, these guys are going to be probably somewhat overlooked, right? Because of their starting position, people are not going to really get there. Okay. Um, and now you can just do this. You fill it out with, with little. In the 20, who's playing? Who's playing him at the twenty-one? Right? Probably only stupid people like me. Um, but again, so this is another thing you can do: is just fade the entire construction, right? And just go for these middling builds instead of these stars and scrubs, like stars at the top and 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 good-looking values at the bottom. Remember, this is this is a Daytona race with a lot of variance, so you can set your optimizer to do minimum of two plays within that ugly range that nobody wants to play, that being between 11 and 20, right? So because one in 10, everybody, you know, is going to want to take one or two of those, or maybe two, and everybody's going to then want to just default to the 30s and beyond. But this teen range is going to be really, really low owned, I think. So what we can do is we can make five builds, like five lineups, with various combinations of, and again, they gotta be good looking plays. So you gotta check your optimizers and your projections and whatever else you look at, okay? But that is a really cool way to kind of be different on a day where, and again, I can't emphasize this enough, all right? It's a day where you can be different and still have a chance to win, okay? Because of just all the variance kind of involved in this. So just to kind of summarize what I have right now. So right now, again, I got 50% Almondinger, which is going to be actually below the field. Um, and this is kind of like your standard type build. Okay. And what I'll do is I'll probably just shuffle in, shuffle around these top tens and just make sure to not get too chalky of these values up here. And this one is going to be just kind of overweighting the top tens, all right, with no Almondinger. And this one is going to be completely just doing a totally different build with nobody from the back. Okay. Um, so, uh, something I just said, which again, it doesn't happen too often, right? When you're dealing with a six slot sport like MMA or NASCAR or whatever, it's so hard, LOL, it's so hard to come into a race or a competition where you can not only be the sole winner in a six person, six slot thing, and actually have a chance right, right, for that thing to win. Um, and this is a race, and these races over this weekend at this track provide the opportunity to do that. So uh, that's going to be my uh, my advice for approaching a very, very violent, <laughs> violently variant uh, race today. And um, uh, that'll do it.